Hi everyone, I'm very happy to bring you one of the most requested series on my channel to date. In this series, we'll be going over how to build your very own homemade 1 to 400 scale model airport. This series will cover not only the steps of making your airport, but all the materials you will need, the planning process, what aircraft you could buy, what scale you'll be basing your airport on, and a whole lot more. Do not worry, this series will not be stopping. I'll be completing it to the very end, as you probably know I have had quite a lot of troubles with my own model airport, but I'm finally now making my way and making progress with the right materials, so we're going to kind of work at this together. This video will hopefully help anyone else that is currently making their own model airport, and the series is basically here just as a reference point. Um, I know some might not be interested in this type of video, that's completely and utterly fine, you just don't have to watch it, but I do know some would like to or are making their own model airport and really need that guidance, that help. So by all means, if you have any questions after the conclusion of this first episode, you can write your question in the comment section, I will respond to you like thoroughly giving you links, I'm happy to help wherever I can. Um, so we're going to pretty much start with what scale you would like to base your airport off. Most people that make homemade model airports will pick the 1 to 500 scale or the 1 to 400 scale. Sitting in front of us is a 1 to 400 scale aircraft. 1 to 500 is a bit smaller and 1 to 200 is pretty gigantic. The reason behind people pretty much choosing the 1 to 400 is there are the likes of Phoenix JC Wings, Dragon Wings, Herpa and a whole lot more that actually create 1 to 400 aircraft. Um, 1 to 500 is quite limited. We do not see the likes of Phoenix JC Wings or Gemini making 1 to 500. You are strictly stuck with Herpa. Not that there's anything wrong with going with Herpa, but you do not have a lot of options when new releases come out. So a lot of people will be choosing the 1 to 400 scale as I did. Also prices for the models are cheaper than 1 to 200. Of course, you are paying more for the size of the aircraft. Of course, the rarity of the aircraft you're trying to purchase will definitely come into account in every single scale. You might see it be quite pricey if you're going for something like KLM Orange Pride, comparing that to a Ryanair 737. So we have chosen, as I said, the 1 to 100 scale. Here is a 1 to 100 scale plane. From this point, what you are going to want to do is create a plan for your airport. Okay, so when picking a design for your airport, this doesn't just include what you're going to be putting on, so how many parking stands. You also need to decide what board you're going to go for and what sizing your airport will be, what will be supporting your boards, so will you be having a table underneath it, will you fit legs onto the airport, um, and of course I guess you need to work out where you'll be storing the airport so you can plan the size accordingly. So this is my plan for the airport as it stands with measurements. This is all in centimetres and this might be quite difficult to comprehend for most. To me it's good in my head and of course when you are planning out your airport you'll plan it how you see fit. Um, you won't be doing it like for a YouTube thing to show everyone what to do, so excuse how messy this is. When building a model airport, you do not want to be working on anything else but pure MDF board. Now, a lot of people have asked what the dimensions of my model airport are. This is, I believe, 1.9 meters long by 0.9 meters width. So it's quite a decent size, however, we did, well MDF does not cut in that size, so we've had to get two boards and stuck them together. So when we, a bit later on I'll actually show you, you can see kind of where it's been attached. That's that's fine, um, but you'll probably have to do that if you want my size that I've got now or any larger. So the reasoning behind choosing to make your own model airport um, over purchasing a Gemini Jets mat set was I've added on 30 more, not 30 cent, I think 300 more centimetres, so 0.3 of a metre, more of board lengthwise, and a bit more width, and on the old Gemini Jets mat 
terminal set that I had in really, really old airport updates, you would have seen that I could pretty much fit seven aircraft on and pretty much only one wide body. With this design, and of course when you make your own model airport, you can customise it however you want however you want to look, if you want a special, I don't know, if you want it to a fire truck area, you can do all of that. If you want a GSC graveyard, you can do that. However, with tiles, um, not this, uh, they're not called tiles, what's the word? If you want to get them from the internet, print them up, stick them on your board. Um, you do not really have the freedom you do when you're painting. So, as you can see here, I mean, it's not the best of plans, but you can probably get an idea from watching previous updates where everything is. You can see this is the start of the runway, cargo terminal, remote holding stands, the international terminal, and the international terminal again. So with this new layout, and again remember how I said I only had 30 centimeters, or 300 rather, added on, I can now fit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 model aircraft on my airport. Of course, I can have some taxiing and on the runway, so that would be a larger amount. But we can see the benefits you do get from creating your own. You are not stuck with the one design. It's ever-changing. And a key thing to remember when doing your model airport, nothing is irreversible. If you make a mistake, which I have made so many, like so many with this airport. Hope we're now on the right track with asking a lot of people. We have all the right materials. But I would say the most important thing is asking around before you start. Hence why I'm making this sort of video in this series. Hopefully it can help anyone creating the airport. Um, you'll kind of get that guidance. You'll understand what you're doing with the airport, where you're going to go in the future. And you can keep coming back to these videos if you need some more help. So. Again, we're not doing any work today in this episode. It's just planning and etc. and etc. and going on about what equipment you're going to need and a whole lot more. So we can see I've got my plan here and I've got all the measurements out. This is not how your airport will look or airport plan will look at the very beginning. Your plan will more look like something I'll whip up in a time lapse now. Now I know that's a pretty pathetic drawing, but um, you kind of get the idea. It won't have all your measurements drawn on. So we'll go back to this page again. And as you work out your plan and what you'll be doing, of course, I'm gonna just zoom out now. As you can see, the model airport has been sanded all the way back down and we're starting again. What you'll be using is a gray lead pencil and you'll have the raw MDF board, which you can actually see in parts of the airport. Moving over here, you can kind of get a glimpse of the raw MDF board, but you will be kind of using, you will be using rather, your gray lead pencil, and you will pretty much also use a ruler. And from here, you will start to draw your lines. So, as you can see, we have the red line, what I would be using was a grey lead pencil and I just draw the line down in grey lead and I would map out this entire airport with my grey lead and get an idea of where everything's going to go. You'll see in probably my first episode with the MDF board just what it looked like. From there, what you'll use is some sort of masking tape. Here you go. Uh, it's really not going to focus for me. Oh, there we go you'll use some form of masking tape. This brand is, I think, 3M. There we go, sorry. 3M. And of course, you'll use trusty scissors. And from there, you will start, as you can see, taping your airport. So, if you're wanting color variation between the parking stands located here and the taxiways and runway, that is when the tape will come in handy. So, what we just do is, is like this, you get the length you need, 
Um, this is quite difficult to do, but you might be able to see I'm... No, doesn't want to... Okay, you can just see that. And I cut it. So then we end up with something like that. And what you do is you come over here on the area you want to tape up. And you go like that. So, the reason I put that there was because when I come to paint, this dark grey that you see will not get on the light grey section. After my dark grey has dried, this piece of tape will get put on this side, and from there I can then do my light grey. Another thing you've got to keep in mind when doing your own airport is the terminal space. Now this can be quite tricky um, and you might not know what to make your terminal out of. That will be in a later episode where we will go over how to make your own 1 to 400 scale airport terminal. But you will need to measure out the area you want to leave um, for your terminal and that will stay raw MDF board for the entirety of, I guess you could say, your production period where you'll be doing the taxiways and so on. And on to the most important part of the airport, the materials you'll be needing for this major project you're about to undertake. What you'll need is a grey lead pencil, um, preferably a sharpened one so you can clearly see your lines that you'll be doing in the planning stages. When you do do your planning, please try your best to mark it as lightly as possible. You don't want to then really go rough and full on press down and then when you come over to paint you find that lo and behold the grey lead line is still there. So you'll need your grey lead, definitely some scissors of course to cut your masking tape which is located over here. Um, any sort of masking tape will do, preferably, um, I don't know the brand of this, um, but something like this, this in width is perfect. So there are those two things you need. Really, a ruler will come in handy a lot of the time. Any size is good. This is 40 centimeters, so this is a longer ruler. Um, you could go for clear rulers, which could also be quite helpful. Enables you to see underneath, which for this sort of thing is quite handy. Of course, brushes. Now you can get an idea the type of brushes we'll be using. Um, you will need a massive one just for going like that. And when you do your first coat of the board, you will be using a bigger brush, of course, like that. So I'll put that to the side. A smaller one comes in handy just in case. And assorted paint brushes, different sizes different feels, different uses, of course. Um, and you can kind of understand when you go into like your local hardware shop which type of paint brushes you'll be needing for the project. It really varies um, what you feel best, what you're willing to spend, if you're willing to get best quality or ones that will just do the job. Now, arguably the most important thing is the paint and the paint pens. A couple mistakes I made during this process was not necessarily my plan but the materials I was using and I was using house paint although it was acrylic you do not want to go for that you should be going for ready mix paint so we'll bring these forward so you can see this is the two this is the paint I'll be using titanium white and carbon grey now, to make a light grey colour, we will add some white to the grey. We do have a tube as well of carbon grey, exactly the same brand. If you're going to get two different types of grey, let's say they've run out of the what are, tubs, which they had at the local art store we went to, if you can find a tube, that will do the job as well. So we'll just sit that there. Again, you might need two coats on the base. That's probably going to be best. One might not do the job, especially if you're coming from just raw MDF board. If you haven't already got a layer like I do, you will definitely need to be doing two coats. Drying time 
For the first coat, I would allow three days. Although it does dry in a day, you do want it to set and not have kind of wet patches underneath and then have problems with your aircraft sticking and pretty much just means you go and you have to sand it and do it all again. And we don't want that, I don't want that. I've already been through that twice and it's quite annoying after all the work you do to then have that happen. So again, these are the two paints you'll be using, or I'll be using. You can go for any type of paint like this. This is Derivan Matisse Carbon Grey and Derivan Matisse Titanium White. Now you can just search this, search this up in Google and you should be able to find it, but it is ready mix acrylic paint. Uh, that will do the job perfectly. So we'll move them to the side. And onto the paint pens, which are going to be the most important thing as well. This is how you're going to do your taxiways, your parking stands, your um, GSE stands, everything pretty much. Your runway details, runway markings, except for the base coat, this is what you'll, once you've done the base coat rather, this is what you'll be working with. Highly recommend these, everyone has recommended these to me. They are Uni Posca paint, uh, paint pens. As you can see, I've got red, yellow, and white. Now, these are the three colors you'll need. Um, yeah, I would say these are the only three colors you need. You might want to get a black, but really it's up to you. The reasoning behind this is white for the runway markings um, and finer detail where the plane sits, so maybe the GSE stands and so on. Yellow, of course, for all the taxiways. And red for the clear off zones where the sky bridges will go and so on. So they're the three main colors you'll be using. Um, in the next couple of episodes, once I do the base coat again, which might be a couple of hours after I've recorded this video, but won't be going up in this video. It will be episode two of how to build your own 1 400 scale model airport. Um, this is what you'll be using from there on in So of course they're important important. Um, I might just unpack one now and Just show you the thickness There are varying thicknesses of the uni Posca pens. There is a thick one Medium size thickness and a really really thin one now We have gone for the medium sized thickness once I can actually open it you will see why we chose this one as it is probably the best option you don't want to go too thin or too thick but um, again it's all up to you you might want to get the thin one in white just in case if you need to do little writing or like some markings here and there um, or red in little in th like the fine thickness because then you can write I don't know taxiway or the taxiway number so here is the pen unwrapped and here is the tip of it if we can get it to focus there we go so there's the tip of it as you can see it's not very thick to get this activated I'm not going to do it here but you push down on the tip and the ink will flow out not rapidly you've got to be careful with that um, and then it will just continue to go freeingly an important thing with these pens Either leave them standing up like that or on their side. Do not leave them like this. Um, all the ink will rush to the bottom of the pen and then you will struggle to get them out. I do believe this will conclude episode one of how to build your 1 400 scale model airport. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you all. I know it's probably a long episode. Uh, when I go to edit it, I think it's going to be around 20 minutes, but sometimes. The longer the video, the more helpful. These episodes will come out as quick as possible. I don't want to put a time frame on them because I am going back to school soon and I really am not going to always have the time to be making these videos. So unfortunately they will come out when they come out. So you guys will have to just be patient in the meantime. Um, but I do promise to keep this series going. Not only do I need it to kind of keep track of what I'm doing, but I know a lot of people need it and there are not that many on YouTube, so there are a few, um, but you might not be able to find them. So hopefully if you're subscribed to me, 
and you like building airports or you would like to after seeing my type of videos, um, this is here for you always to watch. So thank you very much for watching. I know this has been a highly requested series, so hopefully it lived up to your expectations for the first episode. Second episode will be coming shortly, maybe in a week or so, because um, I do know we'll be painting the board and that will be probably be a separate episode, so I can kind of show you the strokes, what you'll be doing, how to mix the paint, um, how you want an even surface, even texture. You don't want lumps and everything like that, so yeah. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe if you're new, heaps more of this type of content is to come, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.